Well, thank you very much. You're Is this compliments of the show? Yes, by Exalta. All right, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, boys, it was mainly a truck show in Detroit, but we cannot forget that actually a lot of relatively significant cars rolled out at the show. Yeah. So let's kind of preview uh, the different car intros. Nathan, you want to go through all yeah. the new cars that came out? So there were, the Ford was really interesting because they did a two-stage thing. They brought out the new Bullets, the 50th anniversary of the movie, and the 2019 Mustang GT Bullet, uh, which has more power, and it has, it's built up in certain ways to be the Bullet, including the color, interior, and whatnot. But they also brought out the actual Mustang that was driven, uh, the, the 68. McQueen. Steve McQueen's actual bullet, the one that he drove, there were a couple other stunt ones, yeah. but this was the running one, which he actually tried to reacquire. He tried to buy it so he could have it, and he couldn't do it. And at one point, the mom of the family was a third grade teacher, drove this thing as a daily car. The yeah. bullet, of That's all things. So. And what was crazy was that you had a chance to interview the granddaughter of Steve McQueen, who is an actor right now, who actually drove it out. Molly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Molly. 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 Yeah. Molly. Yeah. Very nice, cool. very nice. Andre had a chance to talk to her as yeah. well. With the tarp on it, it looked a little bit different than the car I'd seen the day before, so that was another red flag. And then as soon as I saw the paint, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is it. And I think more than anything, I was shocked at how of a job, yes, how well restored it was, and I think also like just how much he cares about the car. I can't imagine it being in better hands. Um, so that was a really cool thing that Ford did, and they, and they had it drive out on stage, and so you had the new bullet with the one from, you know, 68, and they're both on turnstiles, and, and it was the very cool. cool. thing about the original bullet is, not only did Steve McQueen drive it and sit in it, but it wasn't restored, it was... It completely, yeah, the patina was there yeah, for sure. Was, uh, and there's some it rust. smelled like it was really the original too. Yeah, yeah. yeah, when it started up and then yeah. Ford it, it yeah. had that old gas smell. Yeah. But, yeah. but it sounded so sure. cool though, you know, I mean, yeah. that, I give it up to Ford, that was done proper. Yeah. Um, moving on, uh, the Toyota Avalon. Wow, that's a contrast. Yeah. <laughs> From bullet to Avalon, but it's a big car for Toyota because right now, you know, big sedans are having a bit of an identity crisis and they still believe in their big sedans, so they're going to have a hybrid version of it. And it was there. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, they. And the XSC Sport version. You know, it's it's, it's like they took the uh, Camry and dialed to 11, right? Style wise, at yeah. least. It's, it's and very, actually, everything, in my opinion. Yeah. I was, I look, I was like, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm, I actually sat in and I'm kind of looking at it, and I'm thinking, what are all those guys in, and gals in Sun City going to think about this thing? Because it looks pretty out there. Yeah, it does. I like it, but it's 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 not your father's Avalon. No, 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 not at all. It looks like somebody had, had like an air pump and pumped up a Camry, you know, and, and made a bigger vehicle. So um, I think the style is pretty good, but one of my favorites is yes. right there, and it's the Hyundai Veloster. And they went to Three town. Flavors. Three flavors, that's right. You have the normally or naturally aspirated one, you have the turbo 201 horsepower, and then you've got the big bad N. What does it stand for? N, uh, Nyung. <laughs> uh, very good. Uh, Nyung. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's a couple words of Korean are in the head. Um, and that one is just badass. This is a 275 horsepower. I mean, it's, it's, it's going it's to get hot hatch. It's going to smack hard. around some, some competitors, yeah. which is really cool. But we'll, we'll get to that in and a minute. Front wheel drive. Front wheel drive. No wheel drive. And no. I think it's going to be affordable. And price wise, they didn't talk about the prices, but they said they're going to be similar to the current one. So I figure the base is going to be around 20. Or even less. Or even less. The turbo, probably 25. And the and 30 ish. 30 ish, yeah. Yeah, the cool part is, is that the, all of them have independent rear suspension. And. Which is huge. Yeah, three and doors. Doors. <laughs> and three doors, uh, different transmission setups. All of them have a manual option. Cool. A lot of good stuff there. So I'm and, really looking and forward the other to that. Thing, I was talking to the guy. Uh, said that you know Beermann, who used to be the BMW suspension tuner. Yeah. He actually got his hands on the uh, new Veloster N. And uh, I'm really looking forward to you know yeah. give, giving that thing a workout. We'll have to give it to Paul. Oh hell yeah. Yeah. yeah and it'll be cool to like, compare that, of course, to the Civic. Um, type, type R. R because those two are going to go head Yeah, they're front wheel drive, high performance cars. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be a really interesting comparison. So Arnold, Arnold! Yeah, he Arnold. got down with that! Arnold. He's in a G Wagon! That's the other one, so, there's so a G Wagon. There are really G Wagons on our truck channel, but we had so many different trucks we put in our car channel just for this one <laughs> episode. And yeah, so they rolled out the G Wagon and uh, you know, it looks the same. 
exactly. So it, it looks the same, the same power plant. And then they did this huge, huge <laughs> <laughs> open where they had like flames spitting out and the G Wagon drove up and down this big set up hill in this like defunct theater. And then they said, we have a special guest. And of course, Arnold walks out. <laughs> and uh, the guy, I, I watched five of these. <laughs> yeah, it was so cheesy. It was so cheesy. I'm still constipated, really. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, it was so, it was so like, uh, like Austrian. I oh, think but so, but the G-Wagon and I are twins, you know. I was born in Graz, Austria. Same, exactly. Same with the G-Wagon. And then we went to Hollywood at the same time. Oh, we got big at the same time. And the G-Wagon got stronger. And I got, I got strong. Strong. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not joking. This was the whole thing. That's and, awesome. And then, of course, Dr. Z is there, the CEO, right? And Arnold like went off script completely. Oh, no. <laughs> He's like, you know, like, you make me an electric G wagon. When will you give it to the people? And you know, Dr. Z is like, whoa, what? An electric G wagon. We I love it. <laughs> He's like, we have made a commitment to <laughs> electrifying all the Mercedes Benz lineup by you know 2030 or whatever it was. And then I was like, no, no, no. And now, now, I now, have now, it. Now. In the U.S. It's mine already. I have it. <laughs> and then he went in the G wagon. And he goes, you have been in America, and he was. Doctor, he was in America for a long time when they owned Chrysler. Yeah, I bought you a gift. And he stuck a cowboy head on. <laughs> And Dr. Z's like, I wonder what the Germans are thinking of this. <laughs> and then Dr. Z brought out some schnapps. And then they're like, some schnapps, which is always equated with price. Um, so, so, yeah, the new G wagons. wagons. The cool thing is, we got the chance to drive the final G Wagon, really, the final monster yeah. thing. And yeah. so it goes from that to, it's kind of cool. Um, another German, BMW, the X2, that came out as well. Um, Wow, a lot of X cars. A yeah. lot of X cars. X2, X7. I mean, they're really filling out their crossover yeah. lineup. Uh, X1, there's so X2, many, X3, so X4. many tall wagons and stretched coupes and all-wheel drive cars in their lineup. I, I can't think of so speaking. many different names for their yes. cars. What they need is Jean-Claude Van Damme to get out of the back of one of those. Oh, and yeah. do the splits? Oh. Yeah, do the splits between <laughs> two of them. Just, you know, bring out a little bit of a star power. I can, I can see that. that. But speaking of, like, small crossovers, you guys watched the uh, new Cherokee rollout. What was that like? Yeah. 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 Uh, Mike Manley, the CEO of yeah. Jeep and Ram, was up there, and um, he said something interesting. He said um, the car before the um, Cherokee was kind of the Liberty. That was their play in the segment, and when the Cherokee came out, it was controversial, but it tripled their market share. So now he said, okay, we that was our first push, and this is the second play, so they kind of refreshed the Cherokee. No, it's more than it's just a refresh, though. I mean, the argument is a refresh is really a front and, and rear. That's what everybody does in the car world, yeah, right? New, new headlights, new taillights. Yeah. Of course it's gonna have new headlights. Everybody, well, a lot of people dislike the old one, but they have a new engine, they have the turbo. Two liter turbo, which is, Cool, I think. Yeah, yeah. And they have, uh, the interior's been redone, there's more cargo space. There's been a lot of things done to the vehicle to really bring it up another level. Yeah, so. and you know, I like the fact that um, they've got a little bit more conservative. You know, there was that thing where the headlights the were headlights. in the bottom and the little top lights were the marker lights, and now they've got the real headlights. Uh, and it looks more elegant, more grown up. I think most people appreciate it. I, I like the original design, but it was way out there. Yeah, but, but to be fair, it now looks very similar to the new Compass, which is a yeah. lesser vehicle. Yeah. But, it, but it's a go-between between the Compass and the Grand Cherokee. So there's not a lot to really make it look different, except for the Trailhawk version, which looks pretty cool still. So. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, um, Kia rolled out the new Forte. Forte! Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is their, you know, entry level. It's an, it's yeah, it's an an well, but, but, it, but they're bringing a little bit of hurt to the other people in the market because they're bringing out a car that has super tech in it. I mean, they're putting a lot of stuff standard in it. They've got, uh, I mean, it's it, it, in, in terms of what it is. It is a car that's going to create a new benchmark if everything they said is going to happen. So, and but, I think it actually looks interesting. That looks cool. Yeah, it looks good. cool. So, and, can I say something? Yeah, of course. Speaking of Forte, uh, you and I went and saw the new Jetta. Yes. And, and those cars, I think, are going to really come kind of head to head yeah. in the uh, compact sedan yeah, market. The Jetta uh, wasn't, it didn't start at the show. We actually had to go off site and go to yeah. where they were bringing out the Jetta. And uh, yeah, you're right. I think it will go head to head with it. It's certainly uh, much bigger, mm -hmm. right? It's got a lot more, um, like, less. Inexpensive materials, right? You, you yeah, said that in your yeah, video, it's, it's, it's yeah. much nicer on the inside, uh, and I think it'll do well for them. To be honest, I was a little disappointed. 
I'm a huge VW fan. Yeah, he has, I think he, he has a tram stamp that says VW on it. No, it's true. No, that, he does. But, but, no, no, it's not that. It's V on one cheek and W on the other. Oh, that's what it is, VW. <laughs> and when you bend over, bow. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, we just went. <laughs> we just went off the air. That was Roman that made that joke too. I mean, Are you gonna drop the mic? Walk out of the room, drop the mic. Oh no, guys, I, I've been a VW fan for 20 years. No kidding. And the interior materials are a little bit better, yeah. but the button layout, everything is the same. Mm. I mean, it's like they're just refining everything yeah, but, so closely. But Volkswagen does that kind of ergonomic. But I think really well it anyway. needs to stop. Revolutionize your car. You know, that's how I really wanted a new revolutionary car, and they came out with evolutionary a, a ev evolutionary, evolutionary car yeah. that looks almost identical. That's the best cool. moment for me from the entire show was when uh, Andre and I were filming the new Audi A seven fifty five TSFI yeah. Quattro. There we go. That's a mouthful. But um, we were filming it, and uh, all of a sudden, Dr. Z, same guy who was CEO partying, Mercedes. yeah, was partying with Arnold, comes out with like potentially the next CEO because he's been of Mercedes plus the interior designer, and like gets in the car. <laughs> You know this car must be significant when you've got the CEO of Mercedes checking out an Audi. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and they're, and they're like, crawling all over. They're it. crawling all over, and I'm like, whoa, look at that. But, yeah, and, <laughs> and you know the Audi guys are going, ding. Yeah, and all the Audi guys are like, yeah. And then, <laughs> and then walking up comes Johan, who's the CEO of Cadillac. Cadillac. Cadillac, and he's like waiting in the car, and I'm he's in line. Like, he's in line. He's <laughs> seven. I'm like. You guys, I can't tweet this, but Audi should be tweeting. You know? Yeah, they should be tweeting the hell out of this thing. Yeah. yeah, and while you're filming, by the way, other people are like stumbling through your shot and everything else. There were some people stumbling but through the cool thing is, is that you were able to actually get these guys getting into the car. I mean, that says a lot when you've got you know the head honcho from Mercedes going into Cadillac it. and Cadillac. And Cadillac, like, way to go into it. Like, that's that's yeah, that. good for good for. You know what uh, I figured Audi. out? Like at four, it was like at four thirty, wasn't it? So it was I think late. It was late. So like by four thirty, all the journalists are in the press room writing the stories and the, the floor is pretty empty and I think that's where like the CEOs go around and check out the other competitors vehicles. I yeah. Think that's, and then they all know each other of course, right? Some, yeah, of like, course. some like each other, some don't. Alright, can we, all right, can we all go back right. to the 4A super quick because they, you and I were at that, right? We, we watched that debut and they had a really funny little intro. This is maybe not the most interesting game. Well, they're they, hamsters? They, they, the no, music? They, no, the they, hamsters? this is the hamsters. They, no, they, they was, were around. They were, they were, the hamsters were, were there in person, but they weren't in the video. They but they, they made this little funny bit about comparing a Forte to a Lamborghini Aventador. Really? Yeah. yeah it, was really it, was, it was pretty. It was pretty it's funny, actually. Hey, you know, if we can find that video, yeah, uh, we should show it because it's hilarious. It's really funny. It's really well. Maybe yeah. it's on their media site. I bet yeah. it's on. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was really good. I mean, it was, it was well everyone, done. It everyone was, was laughing. Yeah, it was, it was yeah. Really it was, I was like, this is uh, this is good. All right, let's talk prototypes. About prototypes. We had a bunch of prototypes. Now, you know, prototypes don't get as much love because sometimes the prototypes will never be built, mm -hmm. and some of these will never be built, and sometimes. They, they, look, they look exactly like them. So yeah. let's start with the ones that probably won't be built and then go to the ones that will be built and look exactly like they are. So let's well, start with the Nissan. Yeah, Nissan brought out what they call the cross motion, even though it's an X. They yeah. say X means cross. Yeah. So it's so either X motion or cross motion. Depending suicide on doors. Are. Oh, it's, well, it's an all electric, as far as we know, electric off-roader that has three rows of two, so they call it a, two, uh, a four plus two. Hmm. And the interior is really the big deal because they have koi fish like monitoring around. What was that little thing spinning around on that? There's like a little, like little top spinning around. Was there a gnome? It wasn't that, a gnome. That was, that was the one thing. There was a little pyramid shaped top that was spinning in midair on top of the yeah. console. And, I, I, and they ripped off Volkswagen by doing that. Volkswagen, what was that thing? It, it's like a magnetic thing that, that floats. Well, what is it? It's a pyramid. I don't want everything to be. It's a concept, dude. I don't know. They put a pyramid a there. They put a gnome right. in the maybe, Volkswagen. Maybe, look, maybe somebody out there knows what that. I'm sure there's a story. I was just so busy. Some sort of pyramid I, power I, thing. I was flying back yesterday and I was like, I don't know what that thing is. Yeah. I don't right. know what it is. And why is it there? It's cool. Yeah. If you guys know, put it in the comments. Yeah, please do. Right. But, but I think, real quickly, I think it's the shape possibly for future vehicles coming in from Nissan. They even said for 2020, this is what we're right, going to have. Right, but basically what they're doing with the prototypes is they're introducing a design language. That's right? exactly it. Right, so you won't see the prototype, but you'll see the shapes Some elements, yeah. and the dimensions and the twist and curves that, that have the prototype. Same thing with the Infiniti, right? That was uh, their sedan, their new right. sedan, yeah. yeah. 
um, which was very... I thought it was pretty. Yeah, sexy, Elegant. white. Uh, yeah. People were all over it. You know, I, I'm not a designer, so my, my you know, my, um, my opinion doesn't matter, I don't think, but uh, a lot of people liked that thing. It looked really uh, sexy. Ever since you selected a uh, Aztec to come here, yeah. you're, you're no longer <laughs> known as a designer. Sorry, yeah, you're right. I lost, I, I, I lost my designer design car. Yeah. But design, Lexus, I think, is really that onto something design. with design. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the Lexus is actually their... Uh, preview of what they're going to be building in all of their crossovers and SUVs, right? The RX is their biggest seller, so this thing is basically... Like the next, the next evolution. Yeah, next evolution of the RX. And exactly. All. And uh, it was, uh, you know, if you look at all three of these, right, they're all, in a lot of ways, very similar. Yeah. So they're all very angular, they're all very kind of, it looks like origami folded, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that seems to be the Asian design language right now. And let's face it, the designers all know each other, so they do kind of crib off of each the other. The Lexus was... was According to Lexus, designed to look like a katana being formed. That's what they said the design language was. Okay. A sword. A being sword formed. being made. Forged. Forged. Yeah. Well, so liquid metal of... turning into a blade. That was like that was their whole spiel. Yeah, we did. They're, yeah. they're marketing. <laughs> I'm they're sorry, marketing but I mean, I, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't get that. Did you? I didn't get that. No. They gleaned that from the design. I thought it was good looking, but I didn't think of a katana. You know. Wasn't gonna lob any heads. I think if you're a designer, as long as you have a good analogy, it is like like hammers. It is like sake being poured into the cup. I mean, you're well, kind of, you know, ready to pounce, <laughs> right? Yeah. Or or yeah. a tiger. Oh, no, it's, totally, but it's marketing. But, yeah, the RDX, the, though, though nice you have an opinion on the RDX. Uh, RDX is good. The hood is long. The body is uh, wow. short. Wow. I like the RDX, and the RDX is actually coming Once out this year, and it looks it'll look just like it. Maybe yeah. not the, not the same wheels. The interior was nice. They've gone to a more kind of modular interior with their screens, uh, but yeah, it's a good looking car. So Acura finally, perhaps, found a proper design like Yeah, they got rid of that big beak. You yeah. know, now there's a grill back in there, uh, and it could be, could be. I'm a sucker for red. Just saying, putting it out there. Okay, no, like, <laughs> if it had been black, maybe I wouldn't be. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> but when the RDX rolled out, black too. I'm sorry, when the RDX rolled out, it looked good. The proportion was yeah. right. Yeah. They had the chrome kind of element at the top. The lights were bigger. I think, you know, a little, a little bit more macho. I think. I think so. if they could keep the the production vehicle like that, if they could basically keep it's it gonna that way, it's going to be a winner. Then it'll be a winner. I think yeah, that'd be a winner. Yeah, winner. Speaking of better. winners and production cars, yeah. Next. Yeah, the inside um, was there. We did a video on it. They talked to talked to um, Jim and uh, Mr. Jenkins, the head of PR. He was really well spoken. Uh, and I think people really connected with this car because it's a very good looking um, hybrid because the last generation. <laughs> well, Honda's been hit and miss well, with, with some of it's that. It's the third gen, right? The yeah. first one had the uh, it was kind of cool. skirts across. It was, it was actually the first hybrid in America, the first yeah. one. And then I got an interesting story about the second one. It was meant to be like an economy uh, hybrid and um, they, American Honda jacked up the price more than they probably should have. Uh, and it was competing, of course, this is the second gen, with yeah. the Prius, and the Prius just kind of killed it. And this one, you know, hit the market wrong, too expensive. But now this one, big, five-passenger, uh, once again, no numbers, uh, but all the comments in the video are very positive. And they said it's going to have a 1.5-liter engine for its hybrid system. Yeah. And that's all we know. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, but it's coming soon. But I think it's a really encouraging to see the response in our comments section, especially, to that car. Because there's not a lot of hybrids out there that get that positive a response in the looks department, and it looks really good. And you guys have to keep in mind that like cars like the RDX, which are their best-selling Acura, these are hugely important cars, right? When like half the cars that they sell is, is the RDX, yeah. so when a redesign of this comes along, it's a big deal. It right, is. Let's talk about our favorites. Nathan, what was your favorite? My choice for the most interesting car at the 2018 North American International Auto Show is right behind me. It's the 2019 Hyundai Veloster. The particular one that I'm looking at is actually the mid-grade, so to speak, because it has a 201 horsepower, 1.6 liter engine. And the reason I'm picking it over the super powerful 275 horsepower one, or the base model, is because it's that middle ground that I'm looking for. Personally speaking, I live on a budget, and I wouldn't be able to afford a really high-powered car, unless it's used. This car, I have a feeling, would be right in that sweet spot for me. Something between, say, twenty-two dollars to $25,000. And it'll have a turbocharged engine and an independent rear suspension, powerful brakes, good tires, you name it. All of that is what I want. 
And at the same time, I wanted to be driven every day. I want to make sure my spouse, she who must be obeyed, would be able to drive this as well and be comfortable. I think it looks good. I always like the looks and it looks similar to the last model, but it's all new. And I just, I truly believe that it's a game changer. I'm really happy for Hyundai building it and I am dying to drive the cars. All right, Andre, what would you I chose uh, the A7 Audi. Okay, I have to admit, I'm a bit of an Audi fanboy, but this brand new A7 is a special car, and it's the most interesting car, I think, that's here at Detroit, because the execution on it, it's amazing. Especially on the interior, it basically looks like a concept car that came to reality. It's just so high-tech, and I love it. Um, I was like, okay, you know, it's maybe a little bit evolutionary, and then I saw it in person and it looks much better in person, I thought. And the interior, the way that they executed the interior, it looks like a concept, yep. but it's in production form. And all those screens, you know, where they have two touch screens, one above the other, and it just, it just looks so good. It's design. interior of the year, I think. And the interior quality was just top notch. Yeah, really amazing. Well, my favorite car came out about 50 years ago. Let's see whoa. that. Ah, yeah, whoa. We'll, we'll cut the video. So for me, the most interesting car here at the North American International Auto Show is not that one, the new Bullet, but that one. That's right, that is the original Bullet from Steve McQueen. And you know, that is about as iconic of a car as it gets. And to see it in the same condition that it was, well, a whole bunch of years later, from when Steve McQueen raced it up and down the streets of San Francisco. That just brings back a lot of good childhood memories. Uh, so Mike, uh, yes. you did a little behind the scenes uh, yeah, a video. Did. Tell yeah. us about that. Yeah, so it was my first time as media at a major auto show, my first time at Detroit. Uh, and you know, we do our best to cover as much material from the show as we can. Uh, but I don't think we've had the chance to do a lot of behind the scenes stuff yet because people don't realize, I don't think, how much work from our end goes into this, right? Because we're running around like chickens with our heads cut off mm -hmm. trying to get to all these press releases. Uh, so I brought a little GoPro around with me and just did a really kind of informal vlog type video. Nathan, you want to say hi? Hey, if you don't mind. Oh, hi. Are you actually recording? Yeah. yeah. That's why Nathan gets the big bucks. <laughs> yeah, so I can stare at cars that I can never, ever afford. You weren't popping into the shower when I was... No, no, no. Because no, no, okay, no, no, that's too no. behind the scenes. I saw, I saw Somebody else had a camera then. Who the was there? Excuse me? What? what? <laughs> I, I actually was walk. I was walk. I had I had my camera with me, and I was walking around the entire show, and you need to go pee because I didn't want to go in the bathroom with my camera. Because <laughs> it's the weirdest thing of walking into a bathroom. And it's like, hey guys, you know, like, exactly. you got a camera on your shoulder. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, on our truck channel, guys, if you're looking for the most interesting trucks, and there were a boatload of them, uh, check out that video because we did the same kind of deal, doing a recap and picking the uh, best new debuts from Detroit. So guys, let's get to work. Yeah. Another uh, show is in the books, and it's time to publish some more stories. Yeah. Right, a lot more stories coming, so let's yeah. go. And also yeah. we have Chicago in, a, in, in like two and a half weeks. Yeah, Good, so let's go. Get ready for that. Right, let's talk it out. Thanks, Thanks for watching, guys. And of course, check out TFL Truck, where Andre is now publishing a story, and TFL Car for more news views and... Real world reviews. Ciao. Bye.